Today I'm going to talk to you about heaven. And how many of you have heard heaven? How many of you have heard something about heaven? Something about heaven? How many of you have not heard anything about heaven? So I think, it is, I think everybody has heard something about heaven because heaven confuses many people and uh, some do not understand what heaven is. And on the other hand, some think they know everything that needs to be known about heaven and they say, okay, I'm not interested about it. Uh, sometimes people do not know and we do not know what God has uh, prepared for those who love Him. And unfortunately, sometimes heaven has got into the bad press. Whereas uh, those who do not understand have got a wrong concept of heaven. Sometimes people think heaven is a place where you float in the sky with a halo around your head and you see angels floating and playing harps. Sometimes, you know, people think heaven is like a continuous church service where you continuously sing praises and worship and without an end. And so, so the concept of heaven is, is very vague because people really do not know and understand what heaven is. And, uh, but because we do not know, sometimes we lose out on the blessing that it has for us. <clears throat> and before I start, I just want to tell you for those whose loved ones have gone to be with the Lord, that it is a place full of blessing. It is a place that has no tear or sorrow. And those who have, those who have loved ones who are nearing heaven, it's a place of great rest. So I just want to encourage you that there is no tear or sorrow in heaven. And especially these days, when, when we near Christmas, people begin to lose out on God and they begin to get caught up with the season leading on Christ. And at this time, is the time that we really need to focus on heaven because people lose out on heaven in the coming or over the coming few months. They just go to the other side and it is our time to make use of the opportunity and bring somebody near heaven where God can touch their lives. So this is why we have all organized the Christmas trees. This is why we give you cards for you to pray so that we all can take part and bless someone with heaven when the whole world is getting ready to go out of heaven. Okay, so let's read some scriptures from Jerusalem 21, verses 10 to 14 and verse 21. Shall we read it together? Can you read it with this? Is it difficult? That's difficult. Okay, so then I think we will go to the other slide with the, with the other. Uh, it's difficult to read. We will go to the other scripture, right? We'll all read it together, Revelation 21, verses 10 to 14 and verse 21. But I know a person who is pretty close. 
close to me and, and uh, you know, she has seen heaven. And uh, this is uh, a testimony, right? Let me share this with you. A person known to me. She was led by Jesus into a beautiful place. It was a garden with many beautiful flowers and very, very colors. Some of the colors were not seen on her. Jesus was holding her hand and was taking her along different pathways made out of pure white gold. She couldn't describe it words. The flowers were transparent and had a glassy appearance. This was what's described as pure gold in the Bible. On another instance, she was fed with golden balls with taste similar to Turkish delight. She described the streets and pathways of heaven as pure white, transparent, shiny gold. In another instance, she saw an ocean which was so transparent, it seemed there was no water. This was the glassy sea. It was indescribable. Actually, people have gone to heaven. People have seen visions of heaven. And the more you see heaven, the more you understand heaven, you know it is a real place. If you turn to Revelation 21, the first two chapters, first two verses, it says, Behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth. So heaven is a real place. It's not something in our, it's not wishful thinking. It is not a celestial thing. It, 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 is, it is real. You can hold it. Heaven is a real place. And this city has, has a high wall around it. Now, now when you have a wall, um, now we all have walls around our houses. Now why do we have a wall around our house? A wall is for protection. Now, now, all of us probably wrestle at one time or the other of feeling a sense of insecurity. Now, how many of us have felt insecure sometime or the other? How many of you have felt insecure sometime or the other? I I'm sure this is not, I mean, those who are keeping your hands down. Uh, well, that's not true. You would have felt insecure, right? Some are keeping their hands down. You would have felt insecure. If you're really honest, you would have felt insecure at some time. And when we sometimes tend to focus on all what is exterior, our material world, our, 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 our prestige, our honor, everything, we look for the interior, but sometimes inside of us is a person who is so fearful. We look so much to the exterior, but inside is a fearful person drinking and waiting in hope, waiting for our hope. Now, God says He wants to turn everything upside down. He says you first attend on the, your, in, your uh, insecurity first, and He will look at the exterior. He will provide what is necessary. Now, heaven is a place where you don't feel insecure. Heaven is a place that you don't feel insecure because it has a high wall around it. Not only that, heaven is a place with foundations. Now, what, the, what, what does foundation speak of? Foundation is, a, is something that you lay for permanence. Now, do you build foundations on a, a, to your kennel at home? Do you build a foundation to your kennel? No? You don't build foundations to your kennel. You would say, are you mad to build a foundation to your kennel? No, you won't. But if you are building a house, you will build a foundation, isn't it? I'm sure none of you would have endeavored to build a house without laying a foundation. Because if you endeavor to build a house without a foundation, then, then house we might be for. Now, if you want anything to endure, if you want anything to last, you need a foundation for it. It's very simple. Even we talk of buildings and houses, but if you want your marriage to last, it needs a foundation. And you call it the marriage covenant. If you want your health to last forever, you need a good foundation. There are spiritual foundations which we don't have time enough to explore. But one thing is for sure, 
that heaven is a place of foundations. Now, when we look at the world, we see marriages falling apart. We see health falling apart. We see so many things falling apart because there is no foundation. If the foundations are attended, it won't fall down. Do you understand? Now, heaven is a place full of foundation. Even our meeting together as a church has a foundation. If the foundation is broken, it will fall apart. But why do we come here regularly? Because there is a foundation. Everything that is permanent has a foundation. Now this is what I want you all to see today. If we are talking about heaven, we are talking about a place where there is foundation. It's far deeper than the normal church will come. Far deeper than what we think. That is why heaven is heaven and earth is earth. Now, what is the most, the longest relationship you will have? Just tell me what is the longest relationship you have. The longest relationship could be like a marriage, your wife, your husband. Even that relationship is up to the partner till the partner lives. Now, just imagine, if you want to survive eternity together, do you think we will survive eternity together without having a foundation for fellowship? We don't. This is why heaven is far different from what we think of what it is. And it's not only a city with wall, a city with a foundation, it has streets of gold which depicts of celebration. I'm sure when you walk through the streets, some streets are decorated. You walk through some exhibitions, they are decorated. And what is the, what is the feeling you get there? You get a sense of celebration. And this is what we're going to create on the 13th of December, Christmas streets. We want to create a celebration. In heaven, there is continuous celebration. And I will come a little uh, uh, later to this point of celebration. But heaven is far superior to what we know. If you go there, you will find your, you, you are a person of substance. Not a shaky, easily shaky person. Not a person of substance. You endure, you have hope forever. Right. Now the early church gathered their hope by the understanding they had about heaven. If you read with me 1 Peter 1, 3 to 9. 1 Peter 1, 3 to 9. Shall we all read it together? 1 Peter 1, 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through the manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found under the praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Christ. I think we stop there. This is old English, you may have found it difficult to understand sometimes. But this is what it was 